Hi, I'm Riley, and I'm here today to talk about what makes a male a stud. Life history theory is typically used to generalize a species average lifetime, sticking to the fact that organisms are constrained by a finite amount of resources, which lead to trade-offs where they must decide where to allocate the available energy provided from these resources. Typically, species are divided into either fast or slow life histories, generally based off of the speed of maturity, their out reproductive output, and their lifespan. Trade-offs are considered as beneficial changes in one trait that are linked to detrimental changes in another. Some of the most commonly studied trade-offs include those between growth, survival, and reproduction. Our research today focused on that of reproduction. These reproductive trade-offs can be seen between different species such as those between the elephant and red squirrel, where dramatic differences are shown between their average age at first reproduction and that of their average lifespan. However, they can also be seen between the same species, like the difference between early and late production in red squirrels and macaques. Often those who delay reproduction have the longest survival. However, the determinants of reproductive success can differ between sexes. While females aim to have as many offspring as they can while maintaining high survival, males will generally find success through their ability to acquire mates, which often involves competition with other males, primarily within promiscuous species. This leads to the topic of reproductive competition, which can be divided into pre- and post-copulatory tactics. Pre-copulatory tactics often occur in polygynous species where males will compete through the development of large body sizes or weaponry like antlers or horns to acquire mates. Meanwhile, polyandrous species are more likely to rely on post-copulatory sperm competition as the female will mate with multiple males. For our research, we focused on Cape ground squirrels who are a diurnal, non-hibernating, highly social, promiscuous rodent native to southern Africa. Capes could be considered to have a slow life history when compared to other rodents, as their traits are more similar to large-bodied species, such as a delayed age at maturity, a long lifespan of up to 13 years, and also small litters for females of only one to two offspring. Continuing with females, they'll breed year-round entering spontaneous periods of estrus, where males will outnumber them on average of 11 to 1. While we already mentioned that they give birth to small litters, 90% of the litters of two are multiply sired by different males. Males are primarily thought to invest in sperm competition due to their large relative testy size. Additionally, there's no clear evidence of precopulatory selection as there's no territoriality and little aggressiveness between one another. Nearly all reproductive males will have a chance to mate with a female during the year, but despite this, only approximately 28% of males will successfully sire offspring, leading to a large reproductive skew. The males will also make use of two reproductive tactics, where they either disperse to an all-male roaming band shortly after maturity, or delay their dispersal for up to five years and remain within their natal group, mating with females of adjacent colonies. So the objectives for our research was, were pretty simple. We wanted to determine the relationship between age, body condition, and a reproductive tactic, as well as identifying the role each play in the annual reproductive success of the male Cape ground squirrels. We hypothesized that older males would have greater success and that age and body condition would be positively correlated with one another. Our research took place at the S.A. Lombard Nature Reserve in South Africa, which is primarily open grassland with small patches of bush. Field data was collected between the years 2011 and 2019, where we trapped animals to collect body measurements as well as gather genetic samples. Tenure on site was used as a proxy for age as many males dispersed onto site and exact age was unknown. We calculated body condition using the residuals of an ordinary least squares regression of spine length and body weight, and paternity was assessed using the service computer software and assigned with 95% confidence. To look at reproductive success, we used a general linear mixed model that included tenure, body condition, and tactic, while using squirrel ID and year as random effects. We found that tenure has a positive effect on annual reproductive success, and that the longer an individual remained on site, that the more offspring they would have on average each year. Additionally, we found that over 50% of males tenured five years or longer sired offspring while only about 25% of those four years or less found success. And here you can see that each with each year of tenure, the percentage of males who sired offspring increases just a little bit more. 
So using the same general linear mix model as before, we found that there was also a positive effect of body condition on reproductive success. So males in better body condition were more likely to have more offspring each year than those in poor condition. We also found that body condition was significantly correlated with age. So individuals of a greater age were more likely to be in better body condition than those of a younger age. However, the condition of natal males increased significantly more with tenure than band males. So their condition increased more rapidly as they got older than those of the band males. So although tactic did not have any significant effect on the number of offspring sired each year, when looking at individuals who had remained on site after dispersal, we compared the age at first reproduction between tactics. So individuals who re reproduced first as natal males were nearly half the age of individuals who did not have success until after they dispersed. Additionally, those who reproduced first while natal showed higher annual average reproductive success than those who waited. There was no significant difference between the tenure as an adult between the two groups where you might find one in most species due to the dramatic difference in age at first reproduction. Both were on site for just over four years on average. So just to summarize these results a little bit, we found that tenure and body condition influences reproductive success, while age and body condition are positively related with one another, especially by tactic. Additionally, that tactic does not directly influence success, but does influence reproductive timing. So what does all this mean? Our results suggest that older males in better body condition will be the most likely to sire offspring in this species. This makes sense when considering that this species relies heavily on postcopulatory selection and that previous research has found that body condition positively influences sperm production, meaning that individuals in better body condition will produce more sperm than those in poor condition. Overall, this suggests the cause for a slow life history in the species may come from the selection for body condition. And if individuals do not reach their best body condition until later in life, there will also be selection for a longer life and higher survival, leading to a slower life history. Our next area of research will be focused on understanding how these traits influence year-to-year -year survival and longevity in these males to further understand their life history. So I'd like to thank everybody for attending my presentation today and am happy to answer any possible questions during the Q&A. Thank you.